the artist. They say all of my tomorrows await me, and yet they may never come. So we live for today and do what we do, with starving painters and thirsty poets and mad musicians, underpaid actors, flogging dead horses, bearing crosses, fighting lost causes, drinking from an eternal glass of sorrows mixed with modern day horrors. A quick short and a day late, busy going nowhere, trying to get somewhere, anywhere. And though the road is long and the sun may be low upon the horizon, there's still a ways to go before we cross those stage lights to dance in the shadows of the trees and await all of my tomorrows. Conceived in Finchley, yeah, on a July day, my mother told me all about the conception. I said, oh, well, leave out the details. A love story. And I popped out in Dublin Fair City in a baby factory known as the Rotunda Hospital. And my father, he was an economic refugee. He went west to America to seek his fame and fortune, and he took his family, but he never asked me. He never asked me. Off to Tony Soprano land, East Orange, New Jersey, the Bronx, and then a sleepy little coastal town in a place called New England. And that's where all my changes and all the things that made me what I am now happened there. In my many varied travels around America, and I really loved America, and, and I still do in a lot of ways. And I would possibly still be there living, except my father passed away in Dublin, Ireland, and I had been on the road, and I didn't find out about his death until about 10 days afterwards. And, until I called home. So I made up my mind at that point. I said, well, you know, I'll make that, you know, that trip, you know, back to Ireland. I hadn't been to Ireland since I was, you know, seven, seven and a half years old. And this was the most fitting time, you know, a bittersweet journey. And Ireland and Dublin, yeah, well, let's just say they changed my life yet again. <laughs> and, uh, of course, I did go and visit, you know, my father's grave down in, in Dublin. Oh, I love Dublin. I love the music. Uh, I love dancing in the streets. Yeah. And everybody in Dublin was always talking about London. London this and London that and all of that. And I said, yeah, well, I've got to go to London. I've got to check it out for myself. So I came to London in 1987. And initially I worked in the construction industry for some large American construction companies, uh, Circle Industries at the time, uh, building Chelsea Harbor. You know, Another building site, uh, you know, Learner McGovern International uh, down at Canary Wharf. Uh, traveled to Barcelona, Berlin, you know, various places, you know, working at what I believe that I should have been, should have been doing because I always got a tremendous amount of satisfaction of building high rises and, you know, houses, you know, because there was always a sense of completion. And then when that faded and stopped satisfying me, 
individually, you know, the thing in the, inside me. Then I reverted to poetry, which is something that I had always written throughout my life. And I came to a point where I said, you know, you've been keeping all this stuff to yourself all this time. You've been entertaining yourself to keep yourself happy, to keep yourself sane, you know, to get through some of the things that you've had to go through. And always you had that poetry. And a few years back, I decided, hey, hey. <laughs> I went to a gig and I saw a punk band called the Dirty Pits. And they were like having it on stage. And, and they weren't your ordinary ear bashers, you know. And I was just looking at all the people bouncing off the walls and I was saying to myself, I said, well, they can do this. <laughs> Let me see what they might think about what I have to offer. So, in a way, I'm like that 15-year-old kid who's in love with an older woman. He's got his first band. He's going to be 16 you know, next year, and he can't wait to grow up. And I never really did grow up. I'm kind of like a serial adolescent at times. You know, and uh, poetry has always been a great balance for for me personally. The world that we live in, that we inhabit, all together, one planet, and that's it. It's our only home. Too soon for the moon, and Mars is too far, and. You think about all the birds and the bees and all the fishes in the seas, and you think of all the rest of your fellow humanity, and you worry, and you see what some people are up against, not only in their individual environments and their habitats, they're the locked in their own minds, and you say to yourself, you say, oh, you know, how can, oh, I've got information overload. I've got visual overload. I'm seeing horrific images from every single part of the planet, you know, time and time and time again. And, and, it, and it gets ratched up. It's full on. And it's getting, it's going faster and faster and matter and matter and, uh, you're wondering, you know, it's like, wow, will some of uh, these places on Earth, will they ever be able to, you know, so, sort it out? And, and, and how, do you, how, how do you stay sane? You know, uh, one of my escape mechanisms has is, is always been through creativity. You now, whether it was, you know, uh, keeping the personal poetry for myself just to, just to you know, enjoy and now sharing with, with, with people, you know, giving something back, you know, trying to, you know, be that, you know, one, one little bit of, uh, 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 of positivity, you know, amongst many positive, you know, people. And, and it, you never know. We might have one of those, you know, uh, quantum fluxes where, you know, all of those little positivity from all of those billions of people, you know, might, you know, in some way raise our consciousness level. And people and the power of people and the positivity of people, that can affect real change. And I, as an artist amongst thousands and millions of other artists is that this is the expression that we want to convey, that I want to convey, you know, through my poetry, through, through, through the music, through, through, through film, is that, 
It, there's a better way, you know, but we really have to strive for that change first within ourselves and then collectively. And we're worth it. All of us, every single one of us on this planet counts. Every head counts. And without art, without music, without poetry, without the people who make all, 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 all of these type of things, it would be a dreadful, dreary place. And it's bad enough as it is anyway. Imagine what life would be like without music, without visual art, without the spoken word, without the performance of dance. If we didn't have our fellow brothers and sisters on this planet contributing to, 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 to those things, it, it, would be, it would be a wretched place. But with people like that, you know, they make the world a better place because they care to share the art that is within them. And in that beat, the first beat, the heart beat. And long may it beat. And without art, love, love just wouldn't be the same. Sleepwalking through confusion, surrounded by all the collusion, blinded by a scientific complicity of a so-called pure reality. Lied to, led astray, betrayed, slain voices lay in silence. Serve and obey, serve and obey. Surrender, worship, legal, tender. Comply, conform, consume. Serve and obey. Surrender, worship, legal, tender. The owl watches the elephant guarding the wheel. Octopus makes a pick. Spider spins a web. Elephant remembers the owls come to steal. Octopus made the pick. Spider spun her web. Elephant remembers the owls come to steal. The ship in the bottle before it splits through the center of the wheel. Serve and obey. Serve and obey. No way. Serve and obey. Chorus of voices sing from the dead. I wasn't born to serve and obey. I wasn't born to serve and obey. Patrick Lyons, PH7, coming to you from somewhere deep in the neutral zone. Cool. Thank you.